What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Welcome to episode number 70 of the Ambitious Vet Show with Army Combat Veteran, two-time TEDx speaker, and founder of World of Dog Training, Ryan Matthews. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet, where we believe if you desire more, you have to become more. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Corps Combat Veteran, turned passion-driven entrepreneur. On this show, I dive into the trenches with today's top military veteran thought leaders and subject matter experts who know what it takes not only to pay the bills after the military, but really make an impact. You're going to hear a great story, some failures, and some golden grenades that are going to empower you to X you on what matters most in your life right now. Are you tired of feeling like you're surviving life? Would you like to gain the perspective needed to know how to leverage the tools you've gained in life? I mean, how would you like to finally move from feeling lost and going through the motions to once and for all living with purpose with restored passion? If you answered yes, you may be ready to take advantage of the upcoming Ambitious Vet Sprint, where for only $97 a month, you'll get a chance to work with me and five other subject matter experts live along the Ambitious Vet Battle Ready Roadmap that will restore your passion, equip you for the next challenge in life, and give you the clarity needed to accomplish what you desire most now that you're paying the bills. Simply click the link in the show notes below to apply now. Don't waste another minute not living on purpose with passion. Welcome to episode number 70, Ambitious Vet. Excited to have you here and thank you for coming here. Time is the only asset we never get back and I look forward to bringing the golden grenades that are going to make this time only bring more money, profitability, and hopefully more confidence in you um, executing what matters most to you in this next coming week. Um, Ambitious Vet, I'm excited about this episode. Uh, Ryan Matthews brings a clinic to this around how do you take your message and mess and turn it into a message. And um, I want you to really listen for how his biggest failure in life happened at his peak when he had TV commercials and you know was just a public eye and how his reputation, his public reputation came crashing down over night. Listen for what he learned from that and also how you as an ambitious vet can learn lessons and find lessons um, along the way. Also, last thing I want you to listen for is um, just his acronym that he created that you can train any dog in and also yourself in and consistently um, just building confidence and execute effective execution in your life, career, or business. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce Ryan Matthews. Okay, so Ryan Matthews is an inspirational speaker. He's an author and decorated veteran who trained in elite army canines and then brought his experience to the civilian dog training market. He has successfully trained over 3,000 dogs using his proven formula, RCTR, that works for any dog of any age. Ryan is passionate about sharing his gifts and talents to transform the lives of others. He accomplishes this through his companies of World of Dog Training's online training videos, Peace of Mind Hemp Products for Dogs, and his persona brand, Survivor to Thriver. Ambitious Vet, if you've got your mental notepad or your physical notepad, let's go ahead and dive into the trenches with Ryan Matthews. Are you there, brother? I sure am, Chris. What's going on, man? Oh, man, I'm blessed, man. Um, excited to have you on the Ambitious Vet. So go ahead and fill the gaps of that introduction. Let us know about something that not a lot of people know about you. Wow. Okay. That's a good one. Something that a lot of people don't know about me is that I'm really not afraid of much, except for I'm really afraid of heights. If we talk about heights, my palms will get sweaty. <laughs> and I don't know that it's even heights. I think it's the fear of falling. Uh, but there's, uh, it's hard to find things that people don't know because what I'm really known for, man, is just being really straight up, really genuine, really yeah. authentic, and um, willing to go as deep as you all want to go, you and your audience today. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we uncover today, and I'm here to serve. Love it, brother. I love that servant heart. And um, cool thing is, Ambitious Vets, we got to have dinner together at the last military conference in Washington, D.C. And this man's heart is so 
so big. And, um, you know, he has gone through so much in his life that I'm excited to kind of dive in so you guys can take some practical tips and how do you overcome, turn your, your mess or so-called mess into your message. So I'm excited to dive deeper inside the trenches. So, you know, Ryan, I mean, how long did it take you to gain traction out of the uniform? And um, how did you actually do that? That's a really good question, right? And I see it as twofold as it relates to gaining traction. And so if we look at traction monetarily, it took me a few years. So I got out in 2006 and I ended up opening up a pet dog training company in 2008. And I did that for um, two years. And then I opened up my own brand. Essentially, I bought into a franchise and then I started my own brand. And so in 2008 to 2011, I made close to a million dollars training pet dogs. And so I was a military working dog handler and then got into pet dog training, all because I really didn't know what I would do for work as a civilian. And so I made, I made some good money. However, I was a workaholic, Chris. I mm. wasn't willing to address PTSD. I wasn't willing to address the thing under the thing. And I figured that I would just stay busy and work, work, work and stay busy. Mm -hmm. And I'm helping people. But really, man, I was just in my head. I wasn't in my heart. I was mm -hmm. manipulating people. I was, I believe you've done sales training all over the world, Chris. And I was able to have like a 70% sales conversion wow. by demonstration model. And I would manipulate people, man. I would match the body language and the speech tone and mm -hmm. manipulate by way of the handshake. And it was a game for me. It was fun. <laughs> And you know what? It was selfish, man. And so, yeah, I had some traction and we could go out to eat and never look at the price on the menu because there was plenty of money coming in. But I, I was an ego, man. And mm. it wasn't really fair or ethical entirely what I was doing. Now, I don't want to dilute the results because I absolutely was transforming people's relationships and their life with their dogs because I was solving problems. I'm a professional dog problem solver, right? Um, mm. But the real traction, I feel, was three years ago when I had my last wake-up call when I really decided that I would transform my life and I would change the person that, that I am because I wasn't happy with how I was choosing to show up. And the greatest traction has been like late last year where I've been on fire. Almost anything that I've touched, it's just it's just incredible the people that i meet and it's like oh i would like to do this and then next thing you know i meet this person for to make that thing happen it almost feels effortless and it's interesting how i make this fundamental shift in my mind and in my heart and in my soul as a human being and all these incredible opportunities arise and really man i'm just trying to be a messenger i'm just trying to serve i'm trying to rid people of the pain that i had been through and I'm just trying to share some valuable information that has helped me transform my life. And I won't, can't stress enough that I learned that the work never ends. Like we continue to evolve as human beings and I'm dedicated to continuing to prove each and every, improve each and every day. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's the philosophy of this group is, you know, really ambitious vets wake up and how do we get 1% better in area of life that's going to push the needle forward for us today and living an impactful life. So that's definitely speaking our language here. Now let's kind of unpackage that a little bit, Ryan, because, you know, I, like I said, I caught your Ted talk last night. It's officially live, which is super exciting. And it's cool how like you use dogs to kind of, you know, really just heal your own post-traumatic stress and create your own acronym to kind of contradict post-traumatic stress disorder. So kind of walk us through, you know, that process and kind of how like, you know, that acronym that you've kind of created that allows you to consistently, you know, push the needle forward in your own life. Right. Well, it was years ago when we had a business partner and I had looked to franchise what we do with dog training. And it's interesting because with dog training, probably like other things where it's a service space and you're teaching someone something, it's a lesson that you give them. There's like this flow in this dance that happens. And now the expert or the master of the craft maybe not doesn't always know what the magic is. But as we wanted to franchise, my business partner's like, well, you can predict when the dog is going to break the stay. Well, how can you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel it. 
Well, that required me eventually to sit down and create manuals as we wanted to franchise and spell out exactly what is a system that will work to train any dog. Mm. And if this was just, I was just doing the same thing day in and day out, but I never really boxed it up into a pretty package that you could say, apply this and it'll work for any dog. Yeah. And so that's where RCTR was developed was through wanting to franchise and have something that's repeatable and scalable. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, lo- I love that. And, um, you know, I think any, you know, I talk to ambitious vets day in and day out um, right now, and I tell them anything, if you got to duplicate yourself, you've got to, you know, figure out the end result and reverse engineer it and develop those systems and processes and stuff like that. And sometimes it's not the sexy thing to say, right? <laughs> sometimes it's like, we just want to get out there, be in the churches and keep moving forward. But you know, to your point, I mean, I think systems and processes have things start happening, you know, almost effortlessly because you're creating a system that all you got to do is plug right back into the system. It's out poops like um, an effective or an ineffective result. And you just got to go back and fill the gaps. And it sounds like you have done a pretty good job of that. So I applaud you for that. Um, So brother, tell us about like, you know, the the failure, because one of the biggest things that you know, we learn most about, which I'm sure you, you can relate to this man, being a guy, you know, that has the story that you have that have taken you to where you are now. Um, we learn most through failures. So what was your biggest failure along the journey? And then what did you learn from it? There's been a good amount of failures, but you asked the qualifying point where you said the biggest failure. And so I'll highlight <laughs> the biggest failure. Again, there's been plenty of failures, but we'll yeah. focus on biggest because that's what you had said. And so the biggest failure was actually at my peak. Mm. And so it was that self-sabotaging or what? I don't know, but it, you, would, you would think so. And so let's go back in time. We're going to go back to 2011. Now in 2011, I, has, I had this dog training company where I was, uh, there was a wait to work with me. You had to wait about a month or so to work with me in person. And I was charging a good amount of money. Mm. And I had commercials on TV and I had a huge facility and I had a team and I was really having fun, man, making money. You know, I didn't really come for money. And so making all this money, it felt good. It was feeding me and it felt really fun to see the results for the, for the client as well. And I remember that I woke up, I woke up one morning and uh, I threw up something clear and I knew something wasn't right. Now, I had stomach pain for five months prior, but I was in denial. And it's just work, 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 right? Well, I went to the VA, Cheyenne VA, and it ended up being stage three colon cancer. Hmm. Now, I share that, but it's not the biggest thing, and nor was it my wake-up call either. Within within, um, not too much time, I ended up having my first round of chemo, and I went through six months of chemotherapy. However, on the first round of my chemotherapy, it was the 4th of July, a day that I was the kind of combat vet that would put the sign out in front of my yard saying, I, combat vet, don't do fireworks, right? Or <laughs> I would go hide in the mountains, right? And again, we're, we're talking to vets. So I just want to point out that I no longer do that. I am now in a position of the only way through the uncomfortable things for myself is to be through it, right? So I gradually expose myself to the things that I don't like, such as the fireworks, right? Anyways, on the 4th of July, I ended up having a Widowmaker heart attack. Mm. And they call it a Widowmaker because you're not supposed to survive it. Mm. And so May was the cancer diagnosis. July 4th was a heart attack. Mm. But again, I needed my drug. And so I couldn't be without work. And so... The cancer and the heart attack weren't my biggest mistake as it relates to me ignoring myself because I was just work, 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 take care of clients and a bit greedy, right? Which there's lessons in that for sure. But the next lesson I was very naive to, and I was, I was ignorant to the fact that I needed to slow down, that I needed to do self-care, that I needed to put myself first and then I needed to address some unresolved issues that I've had since childhood and thereafter. But I wasn't willing and able to do that because I was just interested in staying busy and then making some money was how I justified it. And 
it was August, which was the month after the heart attack. I went back to work and then that's when the biggest mistake that I had ever made was. And what happened, it was in my dog training facility. I had a Belgian Malinois. Now, if you guys don't know what that breed is, and I know it sounds funny and it's even harder to spell, the Belgian Malinois is like a German shepherd, but on five hour energy and a crocodile. They're kind of nuts and <laughs> super hyper. We use them for military and law enforcement uses them as well. And I had this Belgian Malinois and she had a little sore on her paw and she kept licking it. Now, I don't know a whole lot about health and medical type of stuff, but my logic was that a wet wound won't heal. I think that's kind of com common sense. And I went to put a muzzle on her so that she could not lick the wound. But when I put the muzzle on my dog, she protested. She was not conditioned or used to wearing the muzzle. Well, when she protested, she charged after me. Hmm. And she charged after me. It was like everything got real, real quick. I had to face everything that I had ever been through in this moment. And it was like all these frustrations for everything that I had ever been through came crashing down in this one instance. And I acted out of fear. And some of you, unfortunately, listening may know that sometimes out of fear will be anger or even aggression. And that's what happened. When my dog charged after me, I, I tossed her numerous times and I struck her with even a closed fist. And I was not trying to hurt her, but I was just reacting out of fear. I couldn't think straight. And it was done in front of my office manager. It was caught on my security cameras. And I ended up hiring an attorney because the office manager turned me in for animal cruelty. And I knew that nothing bad had happened, like as it relates to the dog wasn't injured. However, I got an attorney just to be safe. And she watched the video and she's like, oh man, don't worry about this. You'll be fine. We'll do a donation to a shelter and you know do some PR. You'll be fine. Well, within 24 hours, I turned on the TV and there I am. And there's my training facility all on the news. Mm. So this was on the news. I was on the front page of the newspaper. I remember my ex-girlfriend at the time would go to work early so that she could take the newspapers away from her work so they wouldn't see me on the front page. I remember she would get up early and steal the newspapers from the neighbors so they wouldn't see my, my face on the front of it. This was back in 2011 when newspapers mm. were a little bit more popular. And, and I lost everything, man. They, they took my dogs, which that's the part that hurt the most. I lost my business. I went to jail for a month. And I know you have a lot of ambitious vets. So I will share one thing. And that is that even though that business was demolished, you know, it was all over the news, there's negative press about it. I still sold that business for $115,000 cash because my numbers were so good and I had documentation. And so for those ambitious vets out there, it's really important to have documentation and do things legitimately, have a great bookkeeper. Uh, because if, if I hadn't had those numbers and incredible profit and loss, I wouldn't have been able to sell that business, but the numbers were just so attractive. I was able to sell it. And that, that helped me, man, because for the next five years, I hid. I lived off that money. I didn't do anything with my life and I wanted to kill myself every single day because I took on the shame of the public. And I didn't even apply common sense. Like my dog wasn't hurt. Like, why am I, take, why am I internalizing this so bad? And I can just say I'm kind of hard on myself as a person, number one. And number two is I was having a big pity party, man. And, yeah. and that was the biggest mistake of my life. And it has consumed my life thereafter. It wasn't until last year that I've decided to quit being silent, that I've decided to turn my mess into my message, to no longer hide, and really find the lessons in all of these things. And my goal is to, you know, help others through the crap that I've been through. Yeah. And uh, you definitely, you definitely have been. Um, I, you know, Ambitious Vets, I was telling him before we went live is I have a full page of notes here from his TED, his TED talk um, around how he turned his, his mess into message. I'm hoping you're just, anybody that's listening to this live on the podcast or on replay, figure out where this is relevant for your life. If this has hit you one one piece a little bit, this is a person that you could reach out to right now um, and help 
you know, have a hand forward. We're ambitious vets. We don't need, uh, we don't need a hand out. We need a hand up, right? And this is a man that could help you pull your pull yourself out of the black hole that we naturally fall into when we get out of the uniform, right? Where we, you know, we, we're taking actions and sometimes they don't feel like they're actually going where we want to go. And then we start getting reactive and we just start taking any opportunity in your life. Trust me, I've been there, done that. Oh man, it's frustrating emotionally, spiritually, mentally, all that brother. And, um, you know, I just appreciate you being completely open because this is the journey as an ambitious vet, man. Right. And we're, I mean, look, let's be real with all of this, friends. Like, we're trained to kill. Yeah. We're trained to kill. We're supposed to get out and just <laughs> exist with everybody else. Man, I feel like there needs to be this unmilitary training, right? Yeah. And it's crazy how, I mean, I salute every one of you because think about what we have to overcome. And right, like that's massive. We're supposed to just fit in. And so, yes, I want to be that support. And, you know, vets are, are so in my heart. Dogs and vets are the two things I'm most passionate about. And look, I've been there, man. I did the hiding thing. And I understand, you know, the anger and ir irritability out in public. And it's, and then, and mm -hmm. it's, and, and stress. And then there's confrontation. So then isolation and from isolation, substance and from substance suicidal ideation like I understand all that and the people going through that aren't alone and I just look here's the thing don't wait to experience all this crap that I did mm -hmm. to wake up be willing to reach out to someone and and have some change because here's the thing man if the desire is strong enough and we put ourselves in the right environment and situations we can make a change like it's truly limited to our mindset and then setting ourselves up for success again with the right support. Um, but really it's a choice, man. And the beautiful thing about life is I talk about in the second TEDx talk, the line is the beautiful thing about life is in any given moment, we can change. Now it takes a choice and a lot of discipline and determination, but we can each make a change right now, a decision and change it for moving forward. Yeah. And I love that. And I, I, you know, I, I don't know if this is when you developed this acronym RCTR um, when you were in the, you know, the trenches after selling that company for over hundred K um, we're sitting in just kind of like figuring out what's next, isolating yourself. Cause I think, I, I know for a fact, I, I did do that at a season of my life out of uniform too. And I'm sure there's a lot of ambitious vets that, you know, have either had some quick wins out of the uniform, kind of isolate themselves and tried to readapt, but you know, can you walk us through RCTR? Yeah. What, what is, how do you apply that in your life? And what had you get back on track after all this stuff that happened to you, man? It's, well, I'll start with, I'm a really slow learner. And so <laughs> it took me, for like friends, it took me 35 years to become a man. I'll be the first one to tell you, I've been a boy for most of my entire life. Yeah. Okay? And it wasn't until I started to really do the work on myself. Mm. And then I began to, I, well, on interviews, they're like, well, how'd you do it? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just did a bunch of stuff, but I'm like, well, this, that's not really working. So I packaged it into, okay, well, here's some of what it takes. Right. And so RCTR was developed from repetition, consistency, timing, and reward. And that's the, the secret training method to train nearly any dog. It's going to work 99% of the time. The only time it won't work is for a dog that has a neurological defect. Mm. Okay. So it's RCTR repetition, consistency, timing, and reward. Now, Chris, you're a business guy. I'm a business guy and you have a lot of business people in your tribe. And so I feel drawn to share the reason why I packaged RCTR is positioning. And so what I'm doing from a business standpoint I am saying that I am one of, or I am the Caesars, I think the authority in the field as it relates to dog training. So I'm positioning myself as one of the top authorities in the field. And then what I'm going to do, and I haven't done it yet. What's next is I'm saying, yes, yeah, I know dogs, this and that. And now I, Ryan has this crazy story. I also know a little bit about people. Now mm -hmm. let me share with you what I know about people. And so right now, my team and I are building this dog platform as it relates to multiple books, multiple TEDx talks, TV show, and go out at the highest level. Because, Chris, 
I was forced out back in 2011. Hmm. I was forced out of the industry. And now I'm like, no, I go out on my terms. And more importantly than me saying that out of my ego is me going out with leaving something because I have a genetic mutation, right? So technically I should be getting cancer again. And so I'm creating things to be left for when I transition, whenever that may be. And so that's also part of it. But again, establishing myself as a master, not an expert. I think the masters are higher than experts because masters continue to learn. Experts stop and say, I know everything. And so position myself as a master in the field and then we can do whatever we want thereafter. And so that's what I'm doing professionally. And so because I want to get into working with people in time, I used RCTR on the TEDx stage to say, look, it doesn't just work with dogs. It can work with people. Now, I just went on a whim, Chris, and I'm like, this makes sense in my very basic common sense brain. Like, I'm not the sharpest guy. I just surround myself with the sharpest people. Hmm. And, you know, and I was reaching out to psychologists. And I was like, this is what I believe about dog training. And it works. Thousands of times I've been able to duplicate it. But I'm kind of feeling like this works for me and my transformation and working through my own PTSD, by the way, not all related to combat. And they're like, yeah, this is aligned with current um, behavior and psych psychology practices. I was like, no way. They're like, yeah. And then they were breaking it down for me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is way more profound than what I had known. Mm -hmm. And earlier you and I had talked and I was like, Chris, I almost feel like sometimes I have like angels on my shoulder, yeah. which I think we probably all do if we tap into it. And so it's, and I, but earlier I was like offline, I was like, it's kind of like dumb luck. And mm -hmm. That's also the angels saying, right, of how it shows up for me. And yeah. so that's how this psychology thing played out. I was like, it's just a guess. I don't, I wasn't sharp enough to figure it out, but I guess I was, right? Uh, but I use validation through psychologists. So interestingly enough, I have psychologists endorsing RCTR as a way to apply uh, for people to overcome trauma as well, specifically PTSD. Yeah, that's that's impressive, brother. And I, I acknowledge you for going out there and making that happen because it's another avenue for someone to be like, yeah, cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, um, social peer groups and stuff like that isn't calming down this intensity. Like I sat down with one of my best friends I served in the Marine Corps with last night for dinner. He's like, man, I still have this intensity when I communicate. And like, he's like, well, I think I guess I'll go back and do cognitive behavioral therapy again and try to rationalize these thoughts. And I'm just like, man, like, why do you continue to do the same things to get the same results? And I, I know that's a simple principle, but even kind of changing it up and kind of plugging into an acronym can reshape your behaviors and reward it. You know, me and my better half Maggie, we talk about all the time that, you know, if we're going to grind, if we're going to create these results, these metrics is this week inside of our business and our life, because we track metrics in our personal life too. We're just like, we're going to bribe the idiot. We're going to purchase our next quarter cabin trip and that's how we shape that's how we shape our uh, our behaviors man and through repetition tracking metrics is but also you know i just think it's always good to try new things and uh to kind of like push the ball back over to you i mean i think any ambitious vet that's listening to this on the podcast live or on replay i just think it's really important to understand that when you feel like you have something and you feel like you have something like you know ryan has something with this acronym he's been sharing it with the world on the TEDx stage and and even other places as well is always figure out what are the people that have a bigger audience that you could tap into of professionals of people that may outthink you because yeah I'm I'm a marine too I'm not that smart either so how how can you plug into people that have a bigger audience or have more resources for your idea or your passion project your next mission to kind of get going a little bit quicker. So I acknowledge you for pouring all that wisdom out, man. I just want to make sure these ambitious vets are, are getting the nail on the head. So brother, back to you, what is the thing you're most passionate about right now in life after the uniform? It's, it's what I had shared earlier. It's dogs and vets and helping people with transformation. Right. And so yeah. the, the reality is that I will be making my exit from the dog industry here in a couple of years but not until the empire is established. And like I had shared, I'm only going to stop kind of like, you know, get the championship and then retire. Right. And yeah. so not until, you know, I've done the two TEDx talks related to dogs. So I'm cool there. 
Uh, I have my second book coming out about dogs, which is about dog training and then how those dog training principles can apply to our own life. And mm -hmm. so then the only other thing that's going to be after that would be the TV show, um, which is currently on hold, and then creating an online evergreen model, which I encourage all your ambitious vets to do at whatever their master's at. And so really, I'm just waiting on that evergreen subscription model and the TV show, and then I'll, I'll likely be making the exit. And so dogs will always be in my heart and I'll always give back somehow, some way. But what I really enjoy, man, is serving people, figuring out what's going on with them and then solving the problems together. I love solving problems. And so I just started recently working with people on, I don't call it coaching, I call it consulting because I'm not the type that wants to take forever for the answers. It's like, tell me what's going wrong. Let's have you try to come up with something a little bit. And then let me just tell you what's going on and get out there and start doing it. Mm -hmm. And so that's my approach. It's, you know, not, not totally coaching. Right. And, but I'm really having a lot of fun with that. And I'm, I'm super passionate about that. And the other thing I'm really passionate about is just getting out here and sharing and seeing what's landing with people and how they can relate. And man, you know, some of these people they are like, you changed my life. And I'm just like, what? Like, yeah. how's that even possible? Mm -hmm. I'm honestly just, I'm completely, totally regular guy. I'm so regular and ordinary, but I don't want, I don't think like anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm different is I believe in limitless potential and possibilities for all of us. And that's the only way I'm, that I'm different. And uh, it just blows my mind that I can have that kind of impact. And it, it finally it feeds, it feeds my soul and my heart, which I never even knew that was a thing years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, like you said, it's from the beginning of this, you got out of your mind where PTSD is and you got in your heart where your passion is. And like, I no wonder why things are kind of rocking and rolling. It sounds like, you know, any ambitious vet that reaches out to you, I mean, they're going to be able to figure out how to get connected to their heart. And, you know, this tribe's all about going from warrior made to passion driven, not warrior made to overthinking the process. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> I love that, man. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Oh, so, man. Tons of golden grenades here, but I just want to point out like, man, we got a tradition here. So what are some three golden grenades that you could drop in immediately right here to, you know, kind of inspire, equip an ambitious vet to take immediate action, action in their life? that, um, you know, they just want to be known for something out of the uniform. What would be three gold grenades you could drop into this show right now? So one that came to mind as it relates to the thing we were just most really talking about is an exercise that I learned at a retreat. And it's going to feel really awkward. And in fact, I did this with another man. It was a group of men in a retreat, and we hugged another man for three minutes. And so I'm not saying hug another man for three minutes, but maybe hug your significant other for three minutes. And what will happen is your breathing will sink up and your hearts will sink up. Mm. And look, this was hard. I remember, Chris, holding my ex-girlfriend. She was my ex-wife at one point. And I remember holding her and praying to God while I'm holding her to have a feeling. Like I was like, please, Lord, please allow me to feel something. Nothing came, man. Nothing came. Mm. And, and that's the truth for a lot of us vets. And, and you know what? The reason why? I wasn't open to it, man. I was too yeah. scared of getting hurt. I was too scared of losing something again. And you know what? We got to rip that chest open. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage people. Golden grenade number one is rip that chest open. Be willing to connect and be vulnerable. Get over it. Don't listen to that little voice in your head and hug, hug your significant other for three minutes. Time it. Don't let go. Don't think. Just breathe and mm -hmm. just keep doing that. The second thing is I want to encourage people that when they are getting bothered and they're getting triggered, I want to slow down and understand this, that it's not about that person that cut you off. It's not about that person that bumped into you and that's what bothered you. It's way deeper than that. Mm. The, one, the golden grenade number two is, it's always the thing underneath the thing. Mm. So I encourage people to go deeper and search for truth. Okay, not the quick, convenient answer. Like, oh, you just cut me off. Like, no, no, that's not what you're concerned about. It's deeper than that. So be willing to slow down and go deeper. And then that allows us to have some, some shifts, right? Mm. The other thing that I want to encourage people, and this was a game changer for me is, man, there's so much. So th three is tough, is <clears throat> one mindset. Because here's the thing. Whatever we think about, it grows. It expands. Mm. 
okay? And I was such a negative person, Chris, growing up. I had a chip on the shoulder. I would mad dog people. I'd bump into people. And guess what I get back? I got the same thing back. And so I've come to the conclusion that really we're all magnets in life. And so what kind of a magnet am I? Because the type of magnet that I am, I attract the like. So for most of my life, I've been the negative type of magnet and I got mm -hmm. negative into my life. Well, I've decided to, the, for the best of my ability, and I still screw it up, but for the most part, I'm a positive magnet. And that's what I'm getting back. And that's why I'm here with you right now, because you're that positive magnet, Chris. Yeah. And that's how you and I had connected because like attracts like and so i want to encourage people remember that we are all magnets and think about the type of magnet that you want to be and attract because whatever you're putting out is what you're going to get back man yeah that's that's awesome brother i mean um all three of those golden grenades if they want if one ambitious vet applies with one of those right now their life is going to improve in some way shape or form so thank you for you know narrowing narrowing some time frames for ambitious vets in here that are really in the trenches trying to make it work so brother you have a special offer that you're going to be providing for ambitious vets inside this tribe so do you want to do the honors or do you want me to let's have you do it it's your tribe. all right, bro. All right brother all right so ambitious vets um i don't know if he wants to put a limit on it this is up to him but guys i mean you hear how big this heart how big this man's heart is um he's built a company close to um, close to a million dollars in the past two years um he's gone through the darkest of lows to the highest of highs in life anybody like that has weight to their words as you can see um and can narrow time frames in business career um, dog training for trying to get inside that industry. This guy has proven results and making a lot of money in dog training. Or if you're just looking to create more repetitious lifestyle to become more quicker in your life, this man has literally laid out the roadmap and laid out some breadcrumbs for you guys to follow. He doesn't care and stick anybody. So um, he's going to be offering, um, you know, just a call um, for a breakthrough call. For, I mean, how many ambitious vets do you want to offer this to? Is it just one, two? Are you putting a limit on it? No, I believe in limitless potential, man. So oh, whoever man. goes drawn, take the action. And, um, you know, I, I think that's great. Let's incentivize those that are about taking action because that's how I roll, man. Let's yeah. uh, make things happen. Anyone can talk. Let's take the action and let's prove it. Amen. Amen. We do, you know, this tribe's all about challenging veterans to do the work. So I, I will put a deadline on it, guys. I will be pushing this live on the podcast version, which goes into 20 countries on Sunday. So inside this Facebook group for, you know, I encourage you to push this until Sunday, go reach out to him, connect with him in the links on Facebook, say, I want to be the first one to schedule a 15 minute call with him. And, you know, that shuts down on Sunday at 9 p.m. when the podcast goes live. And then the podcast will go infinitely because I know you're an infinite guy. So um, I want you guys to get what you guys need. I know I personally don't have all the answers. I never try to have all the answers. But if his story just really hit home inside of your heart, um, more importantly, your heart, that's what shifts things forward and pushes passion forward. People get out of your way when you're passionate. Right. So um, I just encourage you guys to reach out to Ryan Matthews because this guy is absolutely amazing. So, Ryan, how can people learn more about you, man? Where can they connect with you? Give us sure. all, all that good stuff. So on social media, it's I am Ryan Matthews. It's I am R-Y-A-N Matthews, two T's and an S at the end. And for dog training, it's a simple world of dog training dot com. And for public speaking and the transformational type of work as it relates to personal business, it's easy. It's I am Ryan Matthews.com. Nice. Perfect. Awesome. So brother, I just want to go back to you and acknowledge you, man, for who you are for our community, man. I mean, just from that like hour and a half dinner that we had and all those ambitions that Andy Weens was present, Stephen Cullen, all these amazing veteran entrepreneurs sitting on that dinner, you know, your heart rang true, man. And you were just so there to serve and who you are at, in our community, man, that consistently is always looking to equip people to like get to where you are. Let's acknowledge you for who you are for our community, man. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you, brother. And like I said, we're all magnets. So there's a reason we're all at that table together, right? And so I was honored to be there with all of you because I acknowledge all the work that you guys are doing too. And, and it's, it's fun to, to collaborate and, and share together because I'm with you, man. It's, uh, I don't claim to know everything, but together as a community, as a collective, 
we'll figure it out together. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love the collaborative mindset, man, not the competition mindset wins all day. So we there you have it. Ambitious vet episode number 70 of the ambitious vet show with Ryan Matthews. If you haven't already go and subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Feedback is what allows anything to improve in life. We want to improve in the trenches right beside you. So meet us in the middle and let's get better together. Sound good. Lastly, we know you're warrior made, but you become passion driven. Utilize this one golden grenade you heard today from Ryan, and you're going to find your life being more meaningful. Let's go get it.